enough to speak to the principal, you will have to speak to somebody else at a different at a different level. That's is that what I'm hearing? When we're notified of the potential for a for pro professional practice issue. Well, even if you're not notified, because this principal did not notify you, so should you then have taken another step and gone to their human resources? I mean, should there be two steps instead of just the one going to the principal? I don't, I don't know, but it's, it's I think with <coughs> with the, what we put into place, with them bringing forward the red flag to one of my administrators, that will prompt us to call the district office. So if the red flag is there, we'll contact the district office, not the cost not that the are principal. Hit. Okay. We should take care of that. Okay, thank you. Uh, and thank you <coughs> for what you put in place. And I know this has been a horrific week, so I, on for everyone. Thank, thank you. you. I, um, again, I, I appreciate this. I think there were a lot of questions. It was, what do we know? When do we know it? And where do we go from here? And so I think, um, I think you've lined out a lot of detailed information. I'd love to see it because I was trying to fast and furiously write it down. And the reason I want to see it is I want to see where certain things are overlapping and better understand that we're talking about something that is tremendously important. And I know the weight of that is on all of us here. And certainly I know you feel it as well. So that's not to be diminished. Um, and I think that Mrs. Goodwin brought up something that is a really key part is the, the volume of which your office processes the number of applicants. And the reality is, it's not a perfect system. There's multiple layers of breakdown of communication with DOE, we want to say Manatee County. We're talking about tens of thousands of educators, and these are only certified. I mean, we're not even talking about anyone else that, we haven't even touched on that part. But the reason I raise that is, there is unlikely to be a perfect system with multiple layers communicating with one another. We can try as best as we can, but I think we are the front line to check those individuals who come to us, um, whether they be certified or not. And we have to use every single available resource that we can. Um, and I, I want to make sure the resources you guys have are adequate, um, the processes and such. I, I just, I think that, as you see, you, this is essentially a breach and it has had serious implications. And, um, but I do appreciate the, um, the fast response to seeing, real, once you realize there was a quote unquote breach, to look and see where else we could have seen that. Um, I think that I know the reason we implemented the policy to not require certified teachers for substitutes. And I think we see that there's a, a gap of exposure there. And I don't know if that's something we need to look at reversing or again, I'm just concerned that if they're their applicants and then they become subs, approval for sub, and then they become long-term subs. I, I, and I don't know enough about your system how that pushes and alerts you to it. I mean, there's just, again, the volume of what you're working with. And I'm not undermining your abilities. I think there's a, there's a serious component of making sure you have the resources so that we don't have this to happen again. And I, again, I, um, I'm, certainly it is not, a good circumstance, um, but we, looking forward, make the corrective action immediately. Um, so I, I hope that you will let us know what we can do to support you because it is, you are the front line, the first line to ensure um, that everyone that comes in contact with our students is, um, ensures their safety. So I'll circle back with you for additional information, but I do appreciate it. Mrs. Brown. I think it's that timing of that flag when that flag was put on on 10-3 and he applied at 9-22. When was his last day that he was working in Manatee? Do you know that? I think he resigned the day before. Is that correct? We think he resigned the day before, but we don't have that resignation letter. The day before, you mean September 21st? Yeah, around that time, yes. So that was around, well, and then I'm, I'm wondering, you know, how long it took Manatee to send something up to Tallahassee, and then how long did it take Tallahassee to put that flag up? And if there was anything that could happen that would pull that time, you know, closer so that DOE would, you know, use whatever, you know, <laughs> ex, 
expertise they have to get that on there faster. Because perhaps, I, you, you know, I, I think they knew about it before he resigned, I would hope. But I don't, and I know it takes time to look into something, but if there's some way that we can shorten that time uh, that that flag gets put on, because they can't resign one day and then apply someplace the next, and oh, you know, the, the flag doesn't get put on for another two weeks to get that flag up quicker, and, and, and I know you'll be talking with DOE. Um, perhaps that's something you can talk to DOE about, how they can get that flag up quicker so that when he does turn around and apply the next day. Yeah, absolutely. We, we would like, you know, obviously real-time information is what you were all seeking. Um, the one other thing I just wanted to address, because I believe you asked, was the, the media coverage. You know, as you're speaking to the media during an investigation, you have pieces that are coming out, and we're trying to share as much as we can, um, and not just say every time, sorry, we're investigating, we don't have anything to tell you. Um, you know, so there are certain things that we, we are allowed to say. Uh, we've been investigating this right up until we came here tonight, and we will continue our investigation. We're not done yet. So we're still looking into things and how they happened. This was created, uh, you know, s honestly, just a few hours ago. So we've only had this for a short period of time. So we're, we're trying to get information to everyone as quick as we can, but the media piece is always ongoing. And, and I want to follow up with what Ms. Goodwin said. This is a sensitive situation, and we have to be very careful, um, and I hope anybody involved in it is very careful with what they say, um, because it could be very embarrassing to some students. Um, we don't want that out there, um, but we don't want to have some hysteria. I mean, we've got all these, you know, we saw what happened, you know, after the shooting, there's all this other stuff going on. Um, and, you know, but we also want, if, if students are made to feel uncomfortable with a teacher, not just this one, but any teacher, if they feel that this teacher is having inappropriate contact with them, and it gets down to, you know, teachers say, I can't touch anybody anymore. Um, but what is that, I mean, good touch, bad touch? And, and like I said, uh, you know, there's somebody who brought something in on that, you know, maybe yes we did in kindergarten teaching them good touch bad touch yeah. maybe we need to do it in high school too thank you again i appreciate you guys coming forward and, and sharing what you what you know and i do know you are continuously looking into it and trying to again strengthen our process and system to ensure this doesn't happen again dr Bowden. that concludes the superintendent's report thank, thank you, you. <clears throat> Next, we have the hearing of citizens. Each speaker will have three minutes to speak. When the time flashes yellow, one minute remains and you need to begin to summarize. You must stop speaking when the buzzer rings. Please note that the respect for divergent viewpoints and civility should be shown at every board meeting. Whether you agree or disagree with a speaker, you should listen politely and respectfully without making any sounds of approval or disapproval, and that includes clapping. First, I have Carol Lerner. Good evening, board and Dr. Bowden. Um, I'm speaking tonight as chair of Protect Our Public Schools, but I'm also speaking as a retired educator who uh, worked, had a lot of hats in, in, in my career up, up north. I wrote cur cur uh, curriculum. I wrote a lot of proposals. So when I saw the application of the Pinecrest Academy, I looked at it very closely. And what I found that the Pinecrest is wanting to establish a K through eighth charter school here and open it up in 2019. What, what I saw was a very boilerplate application. It didn't really speak to our community. It didn't speak to our needs. It was not inspiring. I didn't see anything innovative, which is supposed to be the essence of charter schools. Um, and I looked at it before I saw the Sarasota District Charter Review Committee analysis. And when I read that, I thought, gee, they are just right on target 
and are saying a lot of my thoughts. They, they said that the curriculum was not in innovative. They also talked about how the um, school chose an area, the Palmer Ranch area, where there are a lot of empty seats, over 300. Um, they had two replication schools in Miami, uh, and those schools were very different th than our community. Uh, not much diversity in those schools, very few students with disabilities, uh, very few English language learners. Uh, just to cite the students with disabilities, their school had only two to three percent, whereas in Sarasota it can be as high as 17 percent. I was also troubled when I learned about how the governing board would be in Miami, over 200 miles away. And then I looked at the members, and it was interesting, there were five members of this board, and three of them are the management company, the a Academica. Uh, the, the other two uh, have been involved for a long time, but the majority would, would they'd be basically policing themselves. The, um, I think the thing that, that really summarized it best in, in the uh, CRC report, when, it's, when it said that they didn't do their homework on community needs, uh, there's a quote, no apparent attempt was made by the applicant to see if the proposed school is a good fit for Sarasota. But I think there's also a bigger picture that's not in the application, and, and that's the, um, can I have another minute to? I, I have a lot of cards, so I'm. Oops, excuse me. I have. I normally I have a lot of cards, so I'm going to stick to the to the three minutes. But if you wanted to submit anything and put it on record, I, to I just wanted to talk about a Academica how. Okay, but, but I do have to stick to the three minute rule okay. today. I appreciate it. But anything that you want to okay, provide. Okay, I'll give part two ne next. Uh, Very good. Meeting. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, next, I have Karen Dill. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Karen Dill. I'm a resident of Northport. I am also the vice president of the Northport Democratic Club. For the past, I've been in Northport since 2014, and every year we hold a um, Freedom Festival on the 4th of July at Northport High School. The festival is held on the track and the football field. We have fireworks, all sorts of things for the kids. Um, there are vendors, people selling crafts. Uh, the Democrats and the Republicans have had booths there, as well as many religious organizations. Um, this year, when I submitted the application, I received a phone call from Trisha Wisner um, stating that we would not be allowed to have a booth this year because it is on school um, property and it violates one of your um, policy rules, which is section 2.51, dealing with political activity on school property. Now, I understand not wanting to have anything disrupting the children when they're in school. Um, but this is in July. It, there isn't school anywhere near the time we have the festival. I'm hoping that the board can modify your policy to contain the words that no political activity will take place on school property during the hours school is in session. Though that little phrase would solve the whole problem. Now, why were we able to do it in the past and not this year? Your ruling has been in effect since 2004. However, it was never enforced by the city of Northport. Mm -hmm. Frankly, I wasn't aware that you all owned the property there. In Massachusetts, each city or town owns the property that the school is on and they are responsible. So that was surprising to me. But at 
this point, it is too late, we're told, to move the event somewhere else. If your board does not make that change, we will press for the city in the future to hold it at another event, at another venue. Um, but we are hoping that you do allow us to continue this year. Thank you. Thank you. Jerry Nicasto, Nicastro, excuse me. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. Um, the reason I'm speaking tonight is the same as uh, Ms. Dill, the Freedom Festival. It's been a tradition for well over two. <coughs> sure, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. The reason I'm speaking tonight is the Freedom Festival in Northport. As many of you know, it's been a proud traditional uh, event held in Northport for over 10 years now. Uh, families, friends, everybody comes out, has a good time. There's everything from politics to food to coupons for cell phone. As many of you guys know, you've been down there yourselves too. Uh, even different people have even passed out their own campaign literature there. There's never been a problem. Um, upon doing research tonight and stuff like that, and also checking with a few different uh, agencies that um, have had um, legal cases of, of um, submitted to the Supreme Court and stuff like that. Uh, this does infringe on the 14th and First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States. And I am just hoping that the board will um, overturn your um, decision regarding this policy so that way uh, Northport can continue to uh, um, have our festival. And at, at the same time, too, as Ms. Dill said, the kids are not in school. Nobody's there. It's just community coming out, having a good time together, not bothering anybody. And all the groups get along. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Nick, Nick Trolley. Ladies and gentlemen of the board, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. My name is Nick Trolley. I'm a resident, a longtime resident. In fact, I watched the high school we built in Northport. Um, and I'm also the president of the Northport Area Republicans. Congratulations, you have managed to bring the Democrats and the Republicans together. <laughs> <laughs> 2002 was actually your order. 2004 is when we started our festival. I know I was there, I was on a committee that started it. Never before has this issue come up. Now it's been some, this is our 15th year. It's a really simple solution. We take the lease agreement and we add one line to it, and that's an exception. You don't gotta change a rule, you can make an exception to our lease, and, or even rewrite the lease. Simple, simple. Our festival is about freedom, not restriction. Now, they said no children were there, that's not exactly true. Many children are there, and I think that's important fact because this is a learning experience for our children to learn about democracy. And that's something that I know Republican Club has always done there. In fact, I know for a fact at least one of you on this board has had your literature distributed there because I remember doing it. And that was when they were running for re-election two years ago. So, um, yeah, I know that's exactly right, Mrs. Zucker. I, I remember distributing your literature for you. So this is an important thing for grassroots candidates to be able to get their literature out there and into the hands of the voters. Some five to 7,000 people show up at this event. It's the, it's the showcase event of Northport next to Santa Claus. I only know a little bit about Santa Claus though. Some of you know that. Um, Mer America is about electing leaders. Each of you are an elected official. I'm asking you to be leaders tonight and please make a difference for Northport and allow us to have our Freedom Festival. Thank you. Thank you. I do have a couple other cards, and I just want you to know who spoke on this topic. We did address it um, during our workshop, and I believe after we conclude uh, hearing of citizens, we can further address that topic. Uh, next is Ed Gawley. I'm Ed Golly, I live in South Tampa. I asked my friend Joe Reinhardt to distribute some uh, issues I wanted to discuss tonight while I'm uh, speaking to you. 
My purpose in coming before you tonight is to address the unfunded mandate imposed on this and every school board in Florida by the state legislature in its previous session. This amounts to the mandatory posting, the state motto in every building and every public school in the state, which you are required to be in compliance with sometime through this summer. I represent a 25-year-old nonprofit organization that strongly supports a free public education system accessible to all Americans. We recognize the financial stress that's burdening our public school system here in Florida, brought on by the deplorable underfunding by the state government, combined with the efforts of the current administrations, both state and federal, to completely dismantle our public school system and replace it with a profit-oriented private system. Accordingly, we're here tonight to offer a helping hand to accommodate this foolish and unnecessary mandate by the state. Atheists of Florida proposes to provide entirely at its own expense either the posters distributed before you in sufficient quantity to fully satisfy the state mandate. Simply advise us the number of posters required for every building in this county's public schools, and we will deliver the number of units suitable for display in each building. Now, I would like to direct your attention to the United States Supreme Court ruling in the Greece, New York case that was brought several years ago that addressed diversity in invocations delivered before government assemblies. While the court determined that invocations themselves do not violate the Constitution, they ruled that invocations must be inclusive of any and all religions, as well as those of us who reject religious beliefs. The larger poster we're presenting for your consideration has been designed specifically to satisfy the spirit of that ruling in its recognition of a sampling of many of the gods commonly believed in throughout our nation and the world today. Either presentation recognizes the original motto of our nation embraced by our founding fathers acknowledging these United States as a secular nation embracing immigrants from all corners of the world unifying in the common pursuit of our national agenda free of any religious endorsement by the government. So if you accept our offer in a timely manner and would like to modify either design, we have time to even accommodate those changes. We can think of no reason either design would be considered unacceptable to anyone of faith or anyone who rejects faith in their lives. We've included our contact uh, information with the submission and look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you. John Unger. Good evening, everyone. I'm John Unger, and uh, I had a couple kids that graduated from Venice High School. My son Gable graduated in 2014. My daughter Michelle graduated in 2016. Had a good experience. I've had a lot of good experiences at um, Sarasota County Schools. Um, I've been working at Sarasota High School for the last 15 years. But I'm kind of concerned about some things. Um, one thing is I think there's kind of a selective enforcement of, of rule. And I really like the idea of people being able to say I'm sorry and make amends. And I hear people talk about restorative justice and stuff. And I think that's great. But I think it seems like there's a multi-tiered system and the people at a higher level, they can, they can apologize and they can move on. And I see people at a lower level do things that I consider to be less, less harmful and they disappear. And I have to ask questions to find out where they've gone. And that's concerning. Um, and my boss, when I was a teenager, he used to say, the only person that doesn't make a mistake is the person that doesn't do anything. You know, I used to be able to go to him and say, hey, Jim, I was working on the sprinkler system. I cranked too hard on something, I busted it. And he'd, he'd say that to me. And I felt very open about saying, hey, I made a mistake. But in this current situation, I don't necessarily feel that. <clears throat> the other thing is I feel sometimes like the county tries to appear to comply with the letter of the law, but they're not really complying with the spirit of, of the law. And I know from having applied for jobs, and I know for having sat in when people have applied for jobs, that people have come from far, and they're very qualified people, and they didn't get the job because the fix was in. Somebody, somebody was lined up for that job, and that person was gonna get that job no matter what. I also worked with the state of Florida, I saw that too. I saw people would come <coughs> at their expense from South Carolina, Virginia, and apply and interview, get dressed up, you know, have their kids put in care, and apply and interview for a job. They had zero chance of getting, because the fix was in. You know, I applied for one job with the state, 
And I remember calling him up and asking him what the status was. And the lady said, well, what do you mean, what's the status? I said, well, first of all, did you receive my application? <coughs> and her comment was, well, if you sent it, we receive it. You know, there's no transparency there, <laughs> you know? And that stuff goes on. And when there's a big deal and the, the newspaper gets involved or a powerful attorney gets involved, then this stuff comes to light. But there's all kinds of other, you know, under the table dealings that never come to light. And I went through a, a process where, where I was suspended and I wanted to deal with that situation. And I contacted Roy Sprinkle, I contacted Al Hareda by email, I have those emails, I got no response. I went in person to the Landis and I couldn't talk to them. You know, the secretary was kind enough to get Roy Sprinkle on the phone, or no, it was, it was Al Hareda she got on the phone. Um, I never talked to Roy Sprinkle. After I had completed my suspension, I got a letter saying that I was suspended. Well, I knew that because I had served the suspension. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you for listening. That concludes the hearing of citizens. As I mentioned, I know there was a, we are in the midst of a policy review and just in a timely fashion, two, uh, chapter two was part of our discussion. Um, and while we're not finalized with that chapter or that particular policy, um, there was a, a, a discussion as it related to the Freedom Festival, as many of you have reached out to the entire board. Um, I know Mrs. Brown, you'd uh, indicated you wanted to speak. Um, yes. We've decided uh, it, it, we understand that time is an of the essence for you. We are going to look at the policy because there's been some discussion. There's not 100% agreement on how we should do that um, because, hey, it might present a problem for organizations like yourself, but it might even present a problem for our Democratic and Republican clubs or what other, other clubs that we have on campus for the students and we don't want to prevent that. So we want to take a, a, a look at it and not just do it in a, in a speedy fashion. So what I'd like to do is propose that we waive the rules um, for this instance for the Freedom Festival for 2018. Second. I have a motion to waive the rules on Two point uh, waive the rule two point two point five one uh, to allow the um, Freedom Festival. The, is it the Northport Freedom Festival? Yes. Northport Freedom Festival to take place uh, on the uh, Northport campus on July fourth, two thousand eighteen. Second on the amended motion. Yep. I have a motion and a second. Still second. Any comments? Um, I have a comment. Mrs. Goodwin. Well, I, I really think that um, this is probably a really good thing for Northport, and uh, I think we need to look at this and address it, but this is hardly the time to cancel, and um, I, I will be supporting this. Mrs. Zucker. Well, I don't totally agree with, with um, allowing campaigning yeah. on campus, and I know I did it, but um, <laughs> sounds like a hypocrite, but I'm not. <laughs> you said I try not to be. <laughs> but I will support this with the caveat that we look into it and change the law, change our, our policy, because I don't want to break our own policy. So for this year, I'll say yes. Thank you. No. Um, Currently, okay, so I too agree um, that this has taken place for a long time. I think there's a lot of value to the community to it. Um, I think it's a civic organization. Uh, I do believe Mrs. Zucker makes a, made a good point today is that while it relates to the specified policy, we need to dive deeper because the last thing you want is unforeseen consequences with any policy. That's the role we play. But um, I'm supporting this motion because I believe that we can, moving forward, amend our, our policies to be more clearly defined um, as it relates to civic organizations utilizing our property. Um, so I will be supporting this. I see that Mrs. Brown, you have a comment? Um, I, I guess I really don't need to, but I, I agree with what our speaker said. This is the 4th of July. This is absolutely what our country was founded upon, um, and we need to um, support this uh, today 
and perhaps in the future we'll look at it. Thank you, Mrs. Zucker. Yes, it's the 4th of July, and yes, it is what our country is founded on, but we also have bylaws and policies that we must follow. So in order, to, we must make sure that that happens. We can't just say yes without knowing if there are ramifications in other areas. It has to be looked at. Seeing no additional comments, I have a motion to waive the rules on 2.51 for the Mar Northport Freedom Festival on July 4th. All those in favor, please signify verbally by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? And the chair votes aye, and it passes unanim unanimously. You, that was a trick question, because you said any opposed, and if I had said no, which was an a correct answer, I, uh, you, you know, well, never mind. Thank you. Moving. We can speak after the, um, the meeting. Um, next on the agenda, are there any additions or corrections to the consent agenda? Yes, item eight, the approval of the instructional classified personnel report. There are two addendums that have been added since the publication of the agenda. I move for the amended um, consent agenda book to be approved as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second, and I know item number 29 was also pulled for comment. Um, Mrs. Zucker? I just wanted to take the time to talk about what this item is, and that's an agreement between the Education Foundation of Sarasota and the school board. Without the Education Foundation, we would not be able to support many of the great things that we do, many of our programs, many of our teachers. I mean, it's just amazing. And this agreement delineates the relationship and responsibilities of the foundation and the school board regarding the Education Foundation Foundation's College Career Center operated on the Riverview High School campus. That is a plus for us to be able to have somebody to help our students be college and career ready. So I just didn't want to just push it in. I wanted to highlight it as a special. Thank you. Mr. Robinson? I just want to point a clarification. Um, you had said that you had fired that person, but we're going to vote on it in two weeks. I mean, is there any reason not to add it on this time just to get it out of the way. I mean, he's not entitled to any rights between the time you fire him and the time we vote on it, is there? I don't want to give this guy any leeway whatsoever. So he is a probationary employee. He's in his first 97 days of employment. Um, so it does streamline the termination process, but there is an opportunity for him to respond. Uh, the letter left our office today. Uh, he is probably not in possession of that letter. Um, and so, his termination will be effective today. We will not be keeping him on the payroll for the next two weeks. Okay, I just the action that will come before you on May 15th will be a termination with today's date on it. Okay, I just wanted to be double yeah. true. Thank you. Thank you. I don't want to give him Members, please vote on the consent agenda as amended. And the motion passes five to zero. Under new business, item number 47. I would move that the school board of Sarasota County approve the new job Mike. description. What's this? Yeah, Mike. Oh. <laughs> I would move that the school board of Sarasota County approve the new job description for facilities data business process manager. Second. I have a motion and a second, Mrs. Brown. I understand what this would do basically is uh, put us back into the position that we will have a uh, media relations specialist that will be working for us. We won't be hiring a firm. You're is that what this is? You're ahead on the agenda. I'm ahead on the agenda. Never mind. Is there something else? Media specialist. Facilities data. Facilities. Sorry. That's okay. So on item number 47, which is the approval of the new job description for facilities data and business process manager. I have a motion and a second. Are there any comments on this item? That was okay. okay. Members, please 
vote. <clears throat> and the motion passes five to zero. Item number 48. I would move that the board approve to advertise the new school board policy 6.323. I have a motion, is there a second? Second. Any comments? Mrs. Brown. Um, this is a, um, about the use of electronic media for school purposes. It talks about how our school employees and the board members um, are required to use district uh, information uh, and uh, our employees uh, when they uh, communicate with um, uh, students and I would assume with parents. Um, so I would ask that every one of our employees uh, go to our website under board, under agenda, under item number 48, look at the policy because we will be uh, advertising it and then we'll be coming back to vote for it. If there are any questions, we wanna hear about them ahead of time, but it it's important that we set out what the rules are on how to communicate uh, with our students and, and um, with each other. Thank you, Dr. Bowden. Yes, and Ms. Brown's comments are extremely well taken. We are in the comment period for this particular policy. Uh, if this policy is ultimately adopted, uh, we will be making it as part of our back to school message and make sure that as our teachers return back in August, um, that it's not just a policy that lays dormant, but that we get out in front and let them know that there's been a change in policy and what it requires of them. So there will be a educational component that comes with it that talks about the use of social media and that will be for all employee classifications. And this would also be included in the uh, employee handbook? That is correct. Okay, I'm very pleased to see us moving forward and strengthening our policies and modernizing them with the technology that we all regularly use. Um, you know, we have to be cognizant of the exposures that we can create, so this way this streamlines. Um, the communication for everyone. So I'm very pleased to see this moving forward. Um, all those in, please vote, I'm sorry, on your computer. <laughs> And the motion passes five to zero. Item number 48, I excuse move, me, 49, pardon me. I move the revised job description for media relations specialist. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any comments? Please vote. Oh, well, I, I would. Oh, miss, pardon me, excuse me. Mrs. This is Brown. where my comment was before um, that um, I, I'm, if I'm looking at this right and from conversations, um, this will, um, put that um, media and the social media back in the district. Uh, we will not be um, looking for it outside. Is that what this is? Correct, this is a new job description that will reside in our communications department, which will provide staff in support of our director of communications. Um, at our board workshop on May 15th, we're going to bring you uh, a new org chart for communications uh, that shows that structure, but it will include a number of positions as opposed to contracted support. Thank you. Care members, please vote on the approval of a job description. Thank you, Chair Ms. Holmchart. And the motion passes five to zero. <laughs> Excuse me. I would move that the school board approve the new job description for chief of police. Second. I have a motion and a second. Do I have any comments? Well, Mrs. Brown. Why let this one go by? Um, you know, we've been told by the um, legislature that we have to um, have law enforcement in all of our schools now. Um, and I understand, uh, understandably, some of our partners don't want to fund the unfunded mandate. Um, and this is looking at ways that we can take it in house and take care of this and still <laughs> not exactly with the funds that the legislature gives us, because we're gonna have to put some more in too. Uh, but this is a way that uh, we can keep our kids safe. 
but understandably, it is not just these people that are going to be keeping it safe. We're going to be doing a lot of different things at our schools to help them be safe too. Thank you, Mrs. Goodwin. Well, I would just add that this is a really important position because this person will come in and help uh, Mr. Andreas uh, and the superintendent to put a, an active police force together for, for our campuses, our elementary campuses first, and then next year, our middle and high school courses. So it's really um, an important position and um, um, looking forward to seeing how that, that goes forward. Thank you. I have this been challenged with this. I, I know that everyone in this district wants to find the best solution to a, quite frankly, ever-involving environment um, as it relates to safety. Um, and I know that what traditionally, what our options for a number of reasons are not necessarily what our options are right now. Um, we have more options, but quite frankly, available to us. And my concern is, as I expressed at our last workshop, um, I am very pleased to see us put all options on the table to address and see what what makes the what's in the best interest for the district. However, I my concern is this is uncharted territories, and with it comes a myriad of additional exposures that I don't know that we have the infrastructure or knowledge to sustain. Um, in addition, the and I, the unfortunate circumstance that happened with human resources and the, what was addressed earlier with Booker High School <coughs> principal, oh, excuse me, Booker High School um, teacher, I am worried as we move down this path that we need to be very cognizant of what the path forward looks as it relates to having an internal police force, having armed. Um, personnel uh, in our schools and I just feel as though there's a lot of questions to be answered and I have grave concerns. I know that this is just a job description, that it's not that we are filling it yet, but we also know that um, we have to do it quickly. Um, so I have really struggled with how do I do, how we are, what, what makes the most sense. I've also spoken to a number of people in the community who have expressed grave concern and I know and I want to be very clear that I know that the intent is well intended and well intended and to, to strengthen our security of our schools however I just feel that there's a lot of outstanding questions and this is the first step to a, moving towards an internal police force um, not comfortable with going down that road so I will not be supporting this Mrs. Brown There's been a lot of anxiety in our community uh, since the shooting on February 14th over at Parkland. Um, and, you know, the, the legislature um, really focused on what they needed to do, and they came up with an answer, um, or what they thought was an answer, in, in a very short time, and also put that down to us to do it in a very short time. Um, <coughs> it... it, it it's it's a cost that is partially funded. I understand how some of our partners um, can balk at having to be asked for more. Uh, I applaud Venice uh, Police Department and the, and the city of Venice uh, for stepping up to the plate and, and saying they'll work with us uh, even more. Um, but I think we have to try to do what we can in the best way that we've seen some other districts are doing it so that we can do it within the funding we've got, but also some ways that we think has some very positive um, results for our students. But I've heard from some people that have said, you can't have your own police force, and someone said, you know, without having a long gun, we, you know, basically with, if we're not armed the way the, the shooter might be armed, you know, we're not doing anything. And I'm like, yeah. And then there's the issue of arming teachers and all of that, we've got to put that aside and we've got to do what the best thing we can. And I think looking at it, we're going to look at putting this, this police force in effect, but hopefully we never have to use them for a shooter because we are taking other actions. We are hardening all of our buildings. We're, we're putting the bullet, bulletproof glass in the entryways. We are 
doing the perimeter fencing at all of our schools and the interior fencing so that we have that single entry point. And then we're also investing, um, um, I think, close to a million dollars that we were given um, in behavioral support um, of our students and working with our staff <coughs> so that we may never have to use these guys, that they're there, you know, to be friends with our kids and work with our kids. I think that is more important to me is how we're using those other dollars to prevent so that we never have to use or have to rely on these people. But if we do, I wanna make sure we've got somebody there that is trained and that is there and they're with us, they know our schools, they know our students around the clock. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this as, as, as a better option to having, you know, part-time, off-duty, um, you know, fill in when you can officers. And I'd, I'd like to see us move forward with this and I'm supporting it. Thank you. Mrs. Zucker? Well, I think this is a great idea. I really do. I would like the idea that, um, not to say that our partners are not doing well by us, they are. They've been very, we've, we've had a great working relationship, but I think we're at the point right now where it's time for us to have our own police force. I'm very comfortable in making this recommendation and approving this uh, grant, the, the this position. Um, I would, somebody told me a long time ago, we have our, that they wanted to hire out our bus transportation. They wanted a, us to hire a company to transport our students. Then we said, no way, because nobody's gonna take care of our kids like we will. And of course, these employees are our employees. They are, uh, they are um, responsible to us as a district and our community. So, a same thing, I feel the same way about our police force. And we, it's not that we don't have a consultant, we're using somebody from Palm Beach, um, Larry Leon, who worked here before, so he knows our district. So I, I'm fully confident as I vote for this. Thank you, Mrs. Goodman. Just a quick additional comment. I too hope that we're making the right decision and I feel that we are. Safety and security is the most important thing for our students. Many of us, when we went through school, we never ever thought about worrying about being safe and we certainly uh, are very, very concerned with the safety and the emotional behavioral health of our students. And I know um, Mrs. Figueroa Alberts in the back of the room and others in our school district are working very hard, Dr. Kingsley, to put some things in place that will help with that component of, of behavioral uh, health. And we have not done that in the past because we didn't have the funds to do that. So we're really, really hoping that we're making some changes. But over the weekend, I spent, I spent some time talking to one of, a couple of the contractors who are helping us to harden our buildings. And I was delighted to hear from them that after they have work, done work in Hillsborough, Pinellas, Manatee, Lee County, Collier County, that they think we are very hard, uh, far ahead <coughs> of a lot of other districts in what we are doing to harden our schools. And I, no, that's not the end all, but, but it certainly will help. And, uh, and we're, we're very hopeful that uh, we are making the right decision for our students. And uh, that welfare and safety and security of our staff and our students is, is utmost in importance to us. Thank you. Um, I, I had a couple just thoughts and as we move forward, I know that there's been, I know it's a plan in flux moving forward, but there's still a lot of questions that at least remain to the last discussion we had. And I know in, there was a Q&A done um, and they were responding. One of the questions I continue to get is, have we decided is the district providing guns to our internal police force or not? And so the, the timeline of events is you have two job descriptions in front of you that will allow us to begin the process. Uh, simply approving the, the job description is not authorization to hire or to encumber funds. And so what we would like to do, uh, as a matter of fact, what we will be doing is advertising these positions uh, and building an applicant pool. Uh, you will then on May 15th have another discussion around school safety and security. 
and then there will be a vote that we request that allows us to begin the hiring of personnel, and this will simply put us two weeks ahead. Um, so we will continue to workshop those topics. Uh, the two options available to us is to provide firearms. Most law enforcement agencies uh, provide a specification on firearms, and they're provided by their officers. Um, we have not made a definitive decision, but as we sit here today, uh, I believe it will be the recommendation of staff is that we follow the suit of other agencies and provide a specification on firearms, but they remain the personal property of the law enforcement officer. Okay, thank you. Did I see you? Okay, I apologize. And so, <clears throat> like I said, there are additional questions, but I'll wait until the May 15th um, meeting for updates. So all those members, please vote on the item before you. The motion passes three to two. Moving on to the next item on new business, item number 51, is there a motion? I move for approval of the new job description for police sergeant. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any comments? <laughs> Shirley, no. <laughs> um, I, I, in consistency with my previous uh, vote on just, um, I will not be approving this, supporting this today as well. Any comments? Okay, board members, please vote. And the motion passes three to two. Item number 52, do I? I move that the school board approve the revised job description of the Director of Leadership Development. I have a motion, is there a second? Second. Any comments? Dr. Bowden, can you do you just give a quick description as to this particular job description? <laughs> uh, actually, yes, and we'll also be bringing you a, an org chart. I know Mr. Robinson is anxious to receive some more org charts um, at your May 15th, uh, but we have a plan that combines the responsibilities of executive director of middle schools, executive director of high schools, into an executive director of secondary schools, it keeps the curriculum teams and the director, uh, the two director positions intact, uh, and then allows us to create a director of leadership development, which also can be used for special projects to include uh, district-wide um, accreditation uh, and a number of other initiatives and deliver a cost savings to the district, but it will also will be on your workshop agenda on the 15th. Thank you. Seeing no additional comments, members, please vote. And the motion passes unanimously, five to zero. Item number 53, do I have a motion? I would move that the contract limitation for design build contracts of $1 million be increased Mike. to one point. Mike, sorry, I apologize, to interrupt you, sorry. but your mic is not on. <laughs> if you could <laughs> start over. I would move that the contract limitation for design build contract of $1 million be increased to $1.5 million for the safety and security fencing and gates multi multiple campuses projects only. Second. I have a motion and a second. <clears throat> Any comments? Would you, I know I hate to put you on the spot, but do you want to clarify as there's a number of, there's some historical nature as to the change, policy change, et cetera? Sure, so there is a gap between uh, board policy uh, and legal authority. Currently, board policy has a $1 million threshold. Statute has a $2 million threshold. Uh, so the request that is before you today is a one-time exemption uh, on board policy, but keeps us in conformance with uh, state statute uh, to do some purchasing in support of our safety and security initiatives uh, as we harden our campus. I see Mr. Lenthe is approaching. Did sure, I, you want to add any? I, I want to clarify one thing. The Right now, you have a contract with our eight design build firms, and that contract limit is a million dollars. And so I think your policy will allow us to go to two million, two. but That's it's the contract that we're looking for a waiver to, that right now we can go up to a $1 million limit. Uh, we attach the contract to this motion, it's like 1.27 mm -hmm. million. So we, what we'd like to do is go back to that one design build firm for this one project 
and say we want to take, enter into a new contract and say we want to take that limit above 1 million to 1.27. So it's really the contract that we're looking to waive, if that makes sense. It does, no, I, I'm clear on it, and I know that we changed the policy since that particular design build contract was and let. the problem, so we let the contract and then changed the policy, and they didn't keep up with each other. Agreed, so I just wanted to make sure people understood that the clarification, so I appreciate it. Um, unless there are any additional questions or comments, members, please vote on the motion before you. And the motion passes five to zero. That concludes new business. Are there any comments? Mrs. Brown. It's not only comment, but it's sort of a fashion show. Um, <laughs> last night I had the pleasure of attending the We Are Sarasota program at the Opera House. Uh, community leaders, students, and school staff came together to see the presentation uh, put on by the West Coast Black Theater Troupe, Booker High School, Embracing Our Differences, and the Sarasota Bar Association, celebrating our diversity in Sarasota. Their message, small down here, <laughs> I got another shirt that is bigger. We are strong together. We are great together. We are one together. Together, we are Sarasota. And it was very uplifting to me at a time, I think, uh, when we needed some uplifting in our community. Um, there were over 600 students, I understand, there. There were staff, um, and a lot of community leaders were there. You know, we've all heard about that infamous uh, promposal that went viral and, and, and garnered national coverage. You know, <laughs> Those individuals that were involved now understand what a mis stupid mistake it was. And, um, and I want to ensure the public that this is not Riverview High School. Our Riverview High School students have participated in and served as docents for our internationally acclaimed Embracing Our Difference display at our Bayfront. We have international baccalaureate programs at this high school that opens the world to these students. That is not who Riverview High School wa is. And, and th that posting is not who we are. We in Sarasota understand diversity and will work to make sure that all of our students understand diversity. I understand there was a, a talk that we, we had NAACP and other leaders in at our high school uh, yesterday afternoon, and we are working to bring our community together and hoping that we can move forward from this. And I was so glad to be able to see that program last night and to bring it all home. We are Sarasota. We are better than that. Thank you. Mrs. Zucker. I just want to comment on where I was Friday and Saturday. Friday night I was at Sarasota High School and I saw Annie. Phenomenal. I ju I'm telling you all this because it's not very costly to go to our high schools and see fantastic shows. And then Saturday night I was at Booker High School to see Dolly. Hello, Dolly. And my daughter has an exchange student with her, living with her for two weeks. They took him. Now, he's French, and he, he doesn't speak too much English, but all I heard for the whole night was, hello, Dolly. I mean, it was just phenomenal. I wish that more people would go and see these fantastic shows that are put on by our wonderful students. Thank you. I agree. Concu I think of people, oftentimes, you would be surprised to realize that they are not professional actors. Um, I wanted to conclude, you know, I know there has been, especially last week and moving into this week, there's been a lot going on. And um, I, I wanted to tip my hat to the team who worked on Bay Haven. That was a scary situation in a situation where you having to respond and move fast with limited information, err on the side of caution. Um, I can tell you that um, we, I, I can tell you that I, I know when I read it, and as a mom, you immediately get concerned, just like the other circumstances that have happened. But I really was blown away, and I want to I want to just commend um, Chad Erickson, Chris Renoff, Susie DeBose, Jody Dumas. I know there's a, 
Laura Kingsley, I know there's a ton of people that were all involved that were working around the clock. Um, and I think it's a testament. Oftentimes, I recognize there's a lot of discussion. We may not always agree on specifically how the path is for to address the safety and security as we relate to, you know, internal police departments or SRO contracts, et cetera. But I do know that safety and security is paramount, and it comes in all different forms. And I was really, really impressed um, with the work that you guys did, and I really appreciate it because it's not just the traditional safety and security. There's a lot of different elements that we look at and face every single day. And I just wanted to make sure that, um, that everyone in this community knows that people are working very hard every single day um, to, to ensure their safety. So I appreciate that. Um, if there are no additional comments, <laughs> our uh, next monthly work session is May 15th, 2018 at 8.30. And our next regular board meeting is May 15th at 3 o'clock. We are adjourned.